As the COVID-19 pandemic rages on in most parts of the world, how are Agilists finding meaning and purpose in these troubled times? How can we connect, inspire, and support each other? In days gone by, Caravan Sarai's provided rest, recovery, and community for travelers along the ancient Silk Road. Similarly, we hope that our Agile Caravan Sarai episodes will provide rest, inspiration, and hope. We hope each episode will remind us of our shared Agile values and thus bring us closer together. In past episodes, Episodes we've heard from Agile Manifesto authors like Jim Highsmith, Kent Beck, and Alistair Coburn. We've connected with captains of industry like Michael Carra from Nationwide Insurance. We've also heard from global Agile titans including Rashina Hoda and Evan Leyburn from Australia and Naresh Jain from India. As we begin to see the glimmers of hope for the end of the pandemic, Agilists continue to respond with resilience. This is a time for transformation. I invite you to join me as we continue our journey together. I'm Sanjay. Chief Augustine, and this is Agile Caravan Sarai. Diana Larson is Chief Connector and Co-Founder of the Agile Fluency Project. Along with her co-founder, James Shore, Diana focuses the Agile Fluency model on achieving fluent proficiency on an Agile development team. Diana has also founded FutureWorks, where she led Agile software development, team leadership, and Agile transitions. She's also co-authored several books, including the classic Agile Retrospectives, Making Good Teams Great, Liftoff, and Five Rules for Accelerated Learning. Over the last couple of decades, Diana has been very influential in the development of the Agile movement and community, including as a former board member of the Agile Alliance Board of Directors. It's my pleasure to introduce Diana Larson. It's been over 20 years. We've just passed the anniversary of the uh, signing of the Agile Manifesto. So just would love to hear your impressions of the Agile movement looking back over the last 20 something, 20 plus years. Yeah, well, it's it's interesting because 10 years ago, I was still very much uh, involved at the board level of the uh, Agile Alliance. Mm -hmm. And and at that time, um, there was actually... 15 years ago too, uh, there was a lot of conversation about is Agile dead and is this going to work and you know and that that kind of keeps recurring and is it really doing what we thought it was going to do and right. and all of that and and you know at that point I used to say well I think I think Agile still in its its infancy or its adolescence it's still figuring out who and what it is you know. And we've made more progress since then. We we've gotten clearer. Um, I'm I'm you know for a while agile in the mainstream seemed to be moving toward being only Scrum. And as as we know, only one path doesn't give us much flexibility. You know, nothing wrong with Scrum. It's just that that devotion to only thinking about it in one way concerned me but now we're seeing a lot of variation coming up you know we're we're seeing um, a lot more reference now again to uh, extreme programming and some of the other methodologies that were included in, among the manifesto signers um, we're seeing variation is like what would it be like in the across the organization with business agility what you know so it's 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 finding its feet more, I think, and um, and it's also, um, you know, it may be getting ready to turn some corners. So I'm just always excited. I mean, anything having to do with making workplaces better, whether that means better performing or just better places for the humans to be, that's that's where I that's what I want to see. And so I still see Agile trying to figure out that direction and still working toward that. And so that gives me um, a lot of hope and a lot of pleasure to see that. Well, thank you for that optimistic answer. Um, I, as, as you do, um, yeah. I also share that belief strongly that Agile is fundamentally about human beings and how we work yeah. to get together and collaborate yeah. to make the world a better place. Yeah. Speaking of which, let's jump st uh, straight into our second question is, uh, and that is, how is uh, our favorite human being of uh, Diana doing? <laughs> how are you doing in the, in the uh, pandemic? Well, uh, I'm, right now I'm doing fine. Um, I had my rocky times like anybody else. I was not at all sure how 
I mean, I like to be with other people. Uh, I mean, I'm not as, you know, I, I also have my moments of needing quiet and to own my own time, but, but I do like interacting with other people. And I was very, not only concerned for health reasons, but mm. also concerned for how am I going to stay in touch with my community of people? How am I going to continue to collaborate? And one, I mean, and, and in addition to the work I've do, been doing with the Agile Fluency Project and, and my that part of my work life, another thing that has emerged out of this is writing two new books. One is the second edition of the Agile Retrospectives book, which we hope is coming out later this year or early next year, and a book with Tricia Broderick called Lead Without Blame, Building Resilient Learning Teams, which is we have pretty much completed and is probably is is intended to come out at the end of September. So um, that's you know I've had space to do to do work on those as well as contribute to James Shore's second edition of his book. And so the pandemic has given me more time and uh, for writing, which has been great. And uh, you know it's. Uh, had its ups and downs, but I, yeah, I like to, I, you know, I believe everything has upsides and downsides. There That's is right. nothing that is only up and there's nothing that is only down. So um, what I like to do is say, what are the upsides I'd like the most and the downsides I don't mind the least. So like, I don't mind wearing masks that much, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know that's troubled some people, but it didn't trouble me. So I can do that and I can appreciate the fact that it's I've gotten a different kind of space to do work in. That sounds wonderful. I think we're all striving to carry that balance in our personal lives, in our communities yeah. and uh, in the world at, uh, yeah. at large. So yeah. uh, appreciate that. I love what you said about uh, writing and having that time to introspect and, and uh, create and also create leverage beyond yourself you mentioned right. the book um that uh, books that are coming out with yeah. trisha and with jim shore yeah. um perfect segue into our third question yeah. what do you see coming up over let's say the next 20 years or so of agile yeah uh, given that it's been such a wonderful experience for those yeah. of us who've been involved for the last 20 years right seems like you'll have a good perspective and for all your fans out there what's your message of hope and optimism optimism yeah. for the next 20 years well, I think, you know, just like we say, uh, you don't, a business shouldn't adopt Agile because they want to do Agile. They, mm -hmm. they have some other end in mind and Agile is a good path for them to get there, right? Um, on, at the same way, in, as for the Agile community, for the Agile thought, um, it, it's not enough to just be devoted to Agile in that way. But what is our larger purpose? You know, and like I shared for me, it's about better workplaces. So I, in another 20 years, I believe that the movement toward more humane workplaces, the understanding that that's really how to get the business done mm -hmm. is going to be clearer and clearer. And we may not, I mean, just like we don't talk so much about total quality movement anymore. We don't talk so much about, um, the, the 80 and 90s ideas around, you know, customer satisfaction was like king, you know, uh, I, you know, we may not be using agile language in 20 years, but as long as we're still on this path, um, and which I, I believe we will be, um, as long as there are humans involved, right, we're going to be seeking human solutions to human problems. I love that. And um in the work and for us it's in the workplace for other people they're looking in communities and other areas we look in the workplace and um and i i think that i think that's going to just keep marching right along there'll be a place for there will be a place for our tribe ongoing even if we don't <laughs> call ourselves agile <laughs> that's wonderful human solutions to human problems yeah um so thank you for that uh wonderful answer diana any closing thoughts where can uh, folks learn more about your human solutions to the human problems, including your books with Tricia and uh, Jim. Right. Well, I have, um, I'm involved in two websites right now. Uh, I'm on the LinkedIn. Anybody can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, but I have two websites. One is the agilefluency.org with, mm -hmm. with the ongoing work that we're doing there. And then I've just recently established dianalarson.com, oh, okay. which uh, will be a place where people can 
look for what's happening with me and and uh, what I'm up to and what my books I've written and things like that. So awesome. Yeah. So thank you very much for joining me once again. Really appreciated having you here on with me today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah.